Upstart is a website dedicated to bringing news and information about the Internet of Things to people like you. Over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about what is the Internet of Things. I'm going to introduce Upstart. I'm sorry. And uh, we're going to explore where, the, where I'm going with the business. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to present a scenario for you. Picture this. You're asleep. Don't fall asleep. Just imagine yourself sleeping. And overnight, there's uh, emergency road construction that's causing major traffic on the, on the route that you normally take to work. Your smartphone is alerted to the traffic and it determines that you're going to need to wake up 15 minutes earlier if you're going to go to work on time. Your smartphone adjusts your alarm, adjusts your coffee maker, and as you drive in the office, you're able to lock your doors to your house from another app on your phone. The technologies that make all this possible are collectively known as the Internet of Things. They're available today and Upstart shows you how to bring them into your life. This is a quote from Matt Webb. Matt is a, a CEO of Berg, which was a design firm, but now they're in, in cloud computing. Um, one of the products they've made, you can kind of see in the background, it's called CloudWash. It's an internet-connected washing machine. And that's just a prototype, but there's many Internet of Things devices on the market right now. Some of these you'll no doubt recognize, Google Glass, um, the Fitbit, and some of these you may not be as familiar with. Tag is GPS for your pets. 10 million dogs and cats are reported lost in the US every year. Tag helps you find them quicker. Prep pad uh, is a smart scale, food scale, that helps you analyze and track your nutrition. You can share that with your dietitian or a trainer via an app. And we expect many more products like this to, to uh, appear on the market soon. In fact, by 2020, there'll be 50 billion connected devices. To put that in perspective, right now there's about 10 billion. The audience for these devices is who you might expect. It's early adopters, but there might be more of them than you might think. Um, one in four Americans identifies as an early adopter, and they have three defining characteristics. They're status seeking, uh, <laughs> risk taking, and information gathering. And it's that last one that's going to be important as we move forward. <clears throat> Talk about upstart. The content we're going to feature is how to guides product comparisons, things that help bring the Internet of Things products into your life. We're going to show, them how, show you how they work, how can they, you can improve your life. That's our key focus. Here's a few articles that are on the site right now. This is a roundup of uh, Internet of Things products that have been posted to Kickstarter recently. We track that kind of thing and keep you informed of that. This is a guide for wearable devices for your pet. And here's a comparison of some smart locks that we did. How do we get this content in front of people? Well, we're going to go to where they are right now. That means guest posting. We're going to leave comments on existing blogs and forums. And that'll help get our brand out there and also build off the trust that these existing properties already have. We've also identified several social media influencers of space. We know what kind of content they've shared in the past. And we know what kind of content they're likely to share in the future. And we can create that. We're putting together a very strong newsletter offering. And we're going to keep a close eye on SEO. For revenue, we're going to emulate what's existing, what we're existing in the space right now that works. And that means branded content. Uh, Internet of Things brands such as IBM, Cisco, GE, Qualcomm have bought branded content on uh, other tech sites such as Mash Mashable and ReadWrite. We're also looking to affiliate marketing for revenue. And in 2015, we're, we're <laughs> exploring moving into B2B and doing content creation for these aforementioned brands and also creating data products and services. We soft launched the site yesterday, and over the next few weeks, we'll be refining it and improving it. Today, we're looking for content and business uh, partners. On the content side, we're looking for content creators and perhaps syndicators. And on the business side, we're looking for people to uh, join our expanding network of business relationships. Thank you. the question. I'm not sure. <laughs> I said, what wearables will you be giving out at trade shows? Um, probably the, the least expensive ones. <laughs> <laughs> so do you picture this, um, just, is this like a giga-ohm for the Internet of Things? Is I, that how you see this? It has that. I, I like to see it also as a, as a life hacker in a way, where we provide, the value comes from the products and how you can actually you know, integrate them into your life. Mm -hmm. They're going to allow you to save time. They're going to empower you to do things you weren't able to do before. Are going to help you monitor your health, like they're showing the, the value, rather than just like saying, rather than just presenting them. Okay. What is 
the level um, of reviews? What What's the level or I guess access for um, your readers to write reviews? Do you see this uh, potentially turning into a play, um, sort of a marketplace of reviews? It's something we're definitely considering, um, probably via a forum or something along those lines like of creating that community, yeah. Because that's a way that you could potentially generate some revenue is um, leveraging a lot of the customer reviews and making those private and then turning those around and selling customer reviews back to the um, people who, the companies that produce these gadgets. Sure, that's a great idea. Um, so, a great idea, great market, and uh, guess what? I'm a fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my, uh, my, my big question is that um, it's, I, I'm unsure why you are the person. You've made no clear statements as to why are you so, such the right person in connected tech? What make, gives you the, what's your right to play? Why not? I guess it'd be a good. Um, no, I, I guess I'd. No, no, seriously. I mean, the, it's, it's, I've just got back from Collision, which is, mm -hmm. a huge VC, which is a large VC conference in Vegas. This was a, literally something that they're, they're, they're estimating will have easily over. A, a, it's it's bit, a, a, something in a, like a billion dollars is going to be invested into this space yep. over the next three years. Um, there is a dearth of information about this. But equally, you need to be credible. You need to be. You need to be. There's a reason. Like so, when Peter Rice and, uh, and taking Gadget, for example, they had deep, deep connections. They were absolutely on the beat. They were able to break stories before everybody else, other people were because they had a track record, mm -hmm. or and they had connections. What's right. your right to play? I think being here in New York helps. There's a lot of you know companies that are springing up here and there, and we're trying to become you know have better relationships with them. And I think that's. No, but specifically, what is your right to play as the chief exec? I'm, I'm, being po I'm, I'm going to be on point. I'm going to start being on point about my questions. Okay. Um, so I've been doing this. I've been, you know, in the in the digital journalism space for since 2001, like I spoke about. I've helped create sites in the past. I don't have the strong relationship in this particular market, but again, it's such a growing market. I don't know if anybody particularly does. Okay. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> to build on that question sure. and, and what Brianne was saying, I wonder if there's a way. Uh, if you were harnessing customer reviews where you could build up a pool of consumers who could be early testers because a lot of the people connected to the company are not typical consumers. So mm -hmm. if you created a service where you helped them do the testing and get feedback, that might build up your user base in an interesting way. Great. Right. starting your own business versus you know you are in digital journalism you you probably have a lot of connections in that world why not you know go to someone and, and pitch the idea of starting a vertical or working with someone like a Brian Lamb at Wirecutter um, to make this a part of a business that already exists it seems like this could be a really robust offering from a Mashable or like you know or a Gawker or some somebody like that instead of really starting from scratch like I think if I was on the business side your best bet is probably to join some like a blog network or something. Maybe mm -hmm. that's just unsolicited advice, but doing sales is really, really hard. Um, so, yeah, just curious if you thought about other. We, other you know, I thought about it, and it might be easier once we kind of establish a little bit of a voice in a community to to move into that realm. Anyone else? Sure. The Internet of Things is like fast becoming everything. Right. Um, and so, very quickly, it will not be this separate thing, but it'll be everything. Integrated, yeah. So I'm wondering, you know, we've got CNET and The Verge and all these other guys. I mean, the, the tech space is incredibly crowded as mm -hmm. well as tech news. Um, uh, and they are already reporting about the Internet of Things, although not, you know, exclusively. Um, what is it about that what you're going to do? I mean, I heard you mention, like, Life Hacker as a model, but I mean, what, what is it that you're going to do that makes you stand out from the enormous and amount of technology. There's a lot of technology, you know, people obviously, you know, no, no shortage of technology news, but there's not a lot of people doing this. Take like Mashable, for example. Up until last week, they'd only done four stories this entire year on the Internet of Things. So the, the coverage just isn't as robust as you might think it is. And there's not one dedicated spot where you can find everything you're looking for.